resistance can probably destroy it. The arena has loaded. Here we go! I don't know what you guys think, but I feel like that was quite refreshing. What's up guys, welcome back for another video. For context, this was a condensed mix of a few of the first released trailer videos by Embark at the beginning and the official release of the game. And what we're gonna be doing today, I don't know if you know, but we have just today hit the six month mark for the release of the finals. And I thought it would be fun to run down memory lane and check how the game has evolved. As you know, we've hit some difficult patches along the release of the game and up until now with some of the updates being rough or difficult to understand some game changes that have impacted all of us but also the player count not necessarily being where we want it to be and therefore I thought it would be actually fun to check how much the game has evolved beyond our understanding or realization since its release so that we can give Embark a nice little pat on the back and thank them for all their hard work so I hope you'll enjoy the video let's get into it what we're gonna do today is we're gonna run through the timeline of changes that have been implemented in the final since its release. I've taken the liberty to start at the 1.2, which was the game official release date, and not prior to that, meaning not any of the open or closed betas, because those are, in my opinion, not the best way to judge the game. But at least from 1.2.0 and onwards up until the 2.6 or even the 2.7 that was released this week. And I want to run through the biggest changes that has impacted how the game is played and how Embark has reacted to player feedback to keep building their game and make it as fun as possible. Started off with the 1.20 that introduced a ton of things, including the battle pass, but also pets, gestures, emoticons, and sounds, which completely changed the way we approach the game in the sense that you now had personalization and you could now enjoy customizing your own characters. Another important addition to the game made on the 1.20 is that the store was now open and accessible, meaning that you could find some of the skins you had seen through the open and closed betas. And also in terms of gameplay, we had the vanishing bomb added to the game, as well as an important one, the zip lines could now break, which was not the case at the start and rendering that gadget quite OP back then. Moving on quickly with the 1.2.3 with one important fact that needs to be mentioned was the addition of the skill-based matchmaking and the long struggle for Embar to manage to find some form of a balance rank mode for which we're still today seeing them trying to correct and balance things out. For the 1.30 we see two major updates, the first one being the unranked tournament access requirement was from 12 to 6 matches. This was most probably because Embark realized that the unranked tournament was supposed to be a fun mode and that it should not require so much work from players. And secondly, and most importantly, we had the addition of the first version of the position-based leaderboard for players. The 1.4.0, as you will realize, was the start of Embark trying to focus more on the gameplay aspects of their game rather than the UI or the additional features that they were adding to the game. Major updates we see is the buff of the Recon Sense, with the activation cost reduced from 2 to 1, making it one of the key specializations of the mid class. We also saw for the first time a big nerf for the C4 as well as the RPG, with nerfs going across all stats on both of them. A fun fact here that might be worth saying here is that the RPG damage before that nerf was up to 165 damage, meaning that a light class player would be one shot by any incoming RPG. We also saw the possibility to attach zip lines to pickables being removed because back then players were using using this as an exploit to fly across the map and this obviously was breaking the game. And finally we also saw that player health bar have now different colors based on the teams they were put on. 
1.5.0 was also a big update added by Embark where we see the first limited time mode solo bank hit being added to the game. So just for a quick reminder, this was a 12 player arena deathmatch where the first to reach $40,000 of cash out would take the victory. On top of that, we also see gameplay changes with the grapple hook being no longer possible to attach to carry balls. And also we see the second strong nerf for C4 and RPGs, this time focused more on the damage aspect of the weapons, where we see for the C4 the damage going down from 215 to 155, and the RPG from 150 to 140, making it the first time that it would not one-shot a light class. We also see a nerf to throwables, meaning that attaching gadgets now meant that the throwable would have weight attached to it and therefore couldn't go as far as it used to, changing the first approach to nukes that we were facing back at the time. Finally, the VOIP, meaning the comms in the game, were now set to be enabled by default to ensure to facilitate players who have an easier communication throughout their games. A short one with the 1.5.5 where the only real meaningful update was for the defibrillator where you saw a reduced invulnerability after respawn going down from 1.5 to 0.75. At the time, just as a quick reminder, people were even using the players being respawned as a shield to tank bullets and hide behind them while they were respawning. Hitting the mid-season 1 with the 1.6.0, we saw the introduction of the event Steal the Spotlight, where only heavies and protected cashouts were available. We also saw the solo banquet mode being removed, meaning that we were now being introduced to the fact that Embark is playing around with limited server space and that we would not just be accumulating new modes on and on. We also now saw the accessibility to the rank mode going down from 60 to 45 rounds making it easier for new players to have access to the rank mode and start going up the ladder earlier. We saw the turrets and tripwire map variant being removed because it was being considered as ineffective or just bothering players as a whole, as well as the carrier maximum rank increased from 40 to 50 levels, including free drops of accessories back then, which was a very nice gesture from Embark. And finally, in terms of features, we had the possibility added to customize loadouts at the start of each match in every single mode, meaning that you now could adapt your gameplay once the search had been started. On the gameplay side, we had two major modifications. The first being the recon sense was now limited to a 30 meter radius. Before that, it was actually quite infinite, meaning that any player could simply have a wall hack in the game. And that was very annoying. And we also had a little bug where if your statue was in bushes or in grass, not respawn, and that was modified at that point as well. The theme of the 1.7.0 was more revolving around how to optimize the time that players were going to spend on the game, with changes like the play button being added at the end of each game, or also the increased experience gain per finished contract going from 2000 to 4500. We had the same for the weekly goals going up from 4000 to 9000, or even the weekly goal being achieved easier with only six contracts instead of eight. One last point that needs to be made here though that was quite important is that the dead go boom had also been removed so the event was considered foul because it was affecting light players more than any other class and this was judged a little unfair to light players. By the time of the 1.8.0 the players were starting to be a little rough on edges with different things and I'm thinking specifically for explosives such as the nukes and therefore the biggest update we see on the 1.8 is the fact that you were removed the possibility to attach multiple C4s to canisters and they also increased the wobble effect with added weight on throwables making them drop off even faster than they used to. On a side note we also had the seal the spotlight event which was also removed and an important final note was that Embark was starting to distinguish the differences between different hit markers and here specifically with an emphasis on bringing a new type of sound for headshot hit markers. Finally, with the last significant update of Season 1 with the 1.10.0, 1 
we had the smoking guns event with the new western look added to Monaco map as well as the single round tournament mode that was added which was a 14 fight over one single round and added on top the first collaborative community event where we had the goal to cash out 250 billion dollars in one single week to unlock a mysterious prize. Strap yourself up because update 2.0.0 is surely the biggest update we've had so far since the existence of the finals. So in terms of additions, we had huge changes to the game, including a new map being Cis Horizon, which I am sure you all know by now. But we also had an entire new mode added to the game a ton of dynamism to the game and a sense of refresher that was duly needed at that point with Power Shift, which is a casual 5v5 where you compete to escort a platform through the arena. They also added and modified the entire tutorial system to make it more fitting versus the reality of what the game is. They also added the Retro Invasion 82 event to all maps. In terms of modifications added to the ranking system, they've removed the entire progression bar at that point so we had still the same looking bar but just without the points calculation that we used to have in season one and they also added placement matches by the number of eight which you had to run through to determine your rank at the start of the season as well as private matches which are now enabled in the game for the gameplay itself they also made a ton of new additions and new changes so we saw the appearance of the famas as well as the 93r and the KS-23 as the three main weapons for each class, which they also accumulated with new specializations such as the Dematerializer or different types of gadgets like the Gateway Grenade, the Reshaper, and the anti-gravity cube but this was not it they also decided to finally end the era of nukes and explosives as a whole where you saw the c4 ammo count reduced from two to one also and more importantly completely dead at that point where they increased for the third time the strength of the wobble effect but also the activation time for C-Force to be extended. On a different note, they modified completely and reworked the way toxic gas was working, going from high but stable damage to slowly escalating damage over time. Season 2 also saw the complete rework of respawn and defibrillator, the introduction of 3 second reanimation instead of instant respawn. Dome shields were also nerfed going from a duration of 20 whole seconds to only 12. Mark also decided to make modifications as to the loadout per class with the motion sensor being moved from the light class to the heavy class but also the sonar grenade from the medium to the light class as well as the entirety of recon senses being completely removed from the game. And finally for improved and better gameplay Embark decided to rework the way spawns were operating, meaning that you would now be spawning on more unexpected spots, avoiding spawn kills that we were facing in season one. And lastly, but also quite important, we saw how Embark reworked their entire algorithm regarding which maps you were going to play on to avoid the repetition of playing on the same maps over and over, meaning that now you would be expected to play once, maybe twice in a row on the same map before you were put on another server to make sure you wouldn't be playing on the same map a third time in a row. By the time the 2.1.0 hit the game, it was quite obvious that the heavy class was quite on top of the game and Embark decided to hit them where it actually hurts. So we saw firstly a very strong nerf of the SA-1216 with probably the intent to replace it with the KS-23 from the heavy class. But we also saw the glitch grenade now being able to trigger on impact on shields making the shielding capacity much less effective than it used to be. On the other side, we also saw the removed possibility to use gadgets like mesh shield while being revived, which was a weird bug at this time. And finally, Embark started to tackle severely the cheaters issue by implementing a three strike ban system, which was the first real step towards removing said cheaters. 
After a strong 2.1.0, the 2.2.0 saw Embark decide to switch things up a little. Firstly, we saw the F car getting its first real nerf with an adopted recoil pattern, plus less damage on long shots, but also the glitch grenade having just been buffed with the capacity to go through shields was now a bit too strong for what Embark had in mind, and they decided to reduce the effect duration from 10 to 5 seconds, both on grenades and glitch traps. Entering a calmer phase, Embark decided to chill things down a bit for the next update with the 2.3.0, where we basically saw the first Discord quest with the skill issue skin being made available, and we also saw the introduction of the new rank progression bar with the up 3 or down 3 bars, that since then became quite infamous. Another short one with the 2.4.0 where we only saw a few changes including the new community event which was to tour 10 times around the world in power shift in terms of distance and this was to unlock a prize, the boombox. We also saw a bug being corrected which was the fact that sometimes in games players would be marked as diamonds when in reality they were from another rank so this was completely corrected and modified giving more clarity as to each player players ranks and less of a feeling that so many players were already diamond at that time. The 2.5.0 closes our short series of updates where not much was made on Embark's side but here we only saw the mesh shield health reduced from 1000 to 750 HP. Also the start of Embark putting emphasis on correcting the cheaters issue by adding a cheat detection software that was not yet implemented in our game. We're gonna close it off today with the 2.6.0 which completely changed the game and actually brought a huge breath of fresh air to the finals where they decided to modify quite an extensive list of things starting with the ranked tournament players being reduced from 48 to 24 meaning that we were now going down from 4 rounds to 3 rounds and this had the strong effect of bringing clarity to the matchmaking 4 ranked mode now avoiding players to be matchmaked against other stronger or less strong players, therefore bringing an end to the unranked matchmaking era of the finals. On another note, they also fixed a very disturbing bug where players could trigger mines while on spectator. They also added private matches to now work for one versus one, bringing another angle to the possibilities of the game. And the amazing and already quite famous new mode, the terminal attack, based on a very attack and defend type of approach, similar to Rainbow Six or the even more famous Counter-Strike. And finally, on the gameplay side, we saw changes made to the barricade which had its size increased by 20%, the glitch grenade now passes through mesh and dome shields, but also the stun gun which saw a very heavy nerf. At that point players can now crouch, aim, use their gadgets or specializations while being stunned, making the stun gun a much less impressive gadget to be used. And the light class also saw a very strong nerf for the vanishing bomb and cloaking effect where you can now basically see them much better than it used to be. And lastly but also important, the F car saw a very strong damage nerf going from 25 damage per bullet down to 22. That is it my guys. So as you can see, over the spam of 5 months, the game has actually quite remarkably evolved and this is probably going to keep going. So let's not let ourselves be tempted to say that the game is dead because I think it is quite the opposite. The finals has probably never been in such a good position as it is today, with cheaters being kicked out, matchmaking being much more fair than it was. You can expect the player count to keep growing and this game to go global as it was intended to be. If you feel like I forgot anything, please don't forget to let me know in the comment section down below. And if you want to support the channel, we've just barely managed to cash out $377 and we're going to need plenty more if we want to have consistent victory. Counting on you to smash that subscribe button. And guys, last thing that remains to be said is that I will see you on the next one.